Dear colleagues, members of the panel, please take your seats. Yes, please, come here. Andrew is with us, dear colleagues with us. And you know, the topic at hand is quite crucial. Expert of regions of Russia from plans to actions. You know very well that uh, last May, Mr. Putin signed a very important decree which implies uh, and envisages uh, the action plan until 2024. One of the plans is to increase experts of non raw material products and materials. And um, we have to reach the figure of $250 billion. So this is uh, the volume of the non energy and uh, non raw materials experts. In order to reach this figure, to attain this indicator, we have to increase 11% the results of experts of these kinds of products every year. So when it means uh, that we are justified in asking a question whether it is justified or not, whether it is realistic or not, we have to be pinpointed by the result achieved. Uh, for instance, if we look at uh, 10 months of 2018, and the statistics uh, for 2018 in general would be available in March, will show that we grew by 17 percent. So other countries are growing too, but Russia is growing at a more rapid pace. So we have every reason to believe that this is quite realistic to attain this goal. But we'll understand that this is not very much easy. With us at this panel, and the person I'd like to pass the floor to as uh, Andrei Slipnyov, who heads the Russian Expert Center. And along with that, let me remind you that the Russian Expert Center is a single one-stop shop center which brings together all the tools and necessary funds to support exporters. Proceeding from that, Mr. Slepnyov, as ex-minister of commerce of the Eurasian Economic Commission, which achieved a lot of goals in terms of signing an agreement on the free trade area with Vietnam, and which could boast more results. I have a question. Whether this goal is realistic and how we assess this objective, 11 percent rise or $250 billion. So should it be split equally on all the regions where some regions may have bigger say? Well, you ask several questions, and I will have several answers. First of all, this is about our attitude towards the figure of 250. So it's been said more than once, and um, should I repeat myself, please apologize. But I do believe that in that case, uh, repetition is quite use useful. Mr. Silon of the finance minister last year, yesterday said that Russia avoided the Dutch disease where the matic dependence on the turmoils in the commodity markets and gained some macroeconomic sustainability and stability due to the actions of the monetary watchdogs and the regulators. This is clearly very important. And Mr. Silonov, in my opinion, said that it gives uh, totally new opportunities for the development of Russia. In particular, it would provide for better s sustainability in front of the shocks. So what uh, $250 billion in terms of experts I mean? So this is a bar which we have to reach. And um, this is the figure which will allow us to sustainably develop in terms of economics without being totally dependent on the oil and gas sales. So the economy will earn as an industrially developed one, exporting certain products, and uh, there would be some extra proceeds from the sales of oil and gas, and that's good. And we have to strengthen our positions uh, this market. But this is about the quality leaps forward. This is about. Uh, 
embarking on the technological platforms of the future, everything which would provide for the advanced development. So this is an objective which implies the change of the economic model. This is what has been said more than once, and this is the objective which we face at the moment. Naturally, this is more than just attaining some uh, nice figure, more than just a rise, so it goes deeper. And I do think that probably this is the most important objective for the economy, which we see there. Because inside, you may see the change in the economic models, the change in the technologies, the development of competition, uh, rise in the labor productivity, so a lot has to be provided for in order to attain this figure. So whether it is realistic or not, we did some testing. So we did a lot of uh, sessions with the experts, with the um, company's owners, stakeholders. So let me quote several figures. Should we have the voting devices, we could do that experiment once again, but still. So the place of Russia in terms of experts per capita, non-raw materials expert per capita. We did some polls so what Russia, Russia's place is just. Uh, this is your answer, and uh, actually Russia is ranked 74th. So we're next to the Philippines and Honduras. If we, we, if we double our expert figures, 250, so we'll approach Belarus. So we'll a little bit behind, but still we'll be closer to Belarus. Uh, although our colleagues from Belarus uh, in 2024 will be closer to the top performers. China with a population of 1.5 billion and the United States are somewhere around uh, 20s, 30s. So this is our starting point, uh, place 74. So the share of our companies which participate in the foreign trade in the experts. So what do you think? So the actual figure is 0.8 percent. 30 percent to uh, oh, 0.8 percent of companies are selling abroad. So Germany uh, could boast the figure of 8 percent uh, outside the European Union, but 0.8 percent. So this is quite little. So it means that. The threshold is quite low. What we're going to do now is to make the bulk of our business should be trained to expert, to become global. This is the main essence of the project, because all the barriers are on your mind. Companies do not see themselves as global stakeholders. They uh, uh, use the original terms uh, where they are ready to export Ukraine and Belarus and Kazakhstan. U Ukraine is no longer relevant, so uh, the ambitions do not go farther than uh, Belarus and Kazakhstan, but the potential is huge. And we see a lot of opportunities there. For instance, Germans approached us and said, we see that you are more competitive than China is because uh, the labor costs in China increased, and uh, our companies uh, can boast good quality and low pay. And so the Germans invite us uh, to start cooperation, start procurement. So there is more demand for that. And I have a lot of uh, stories of success, so which I may showcase in order to improve their morale. Getting back to the figures. We do believe that this figure is quite realistic. First, secondly, we have excellent market conditions for that. However, infrastructure maybe it's called it and uh, criticized still it is quite good, so it should be compared on a competitive basis. And uh, so the enterprises developed very well, so the interest rates are, are lower than they used to be, and uh, there are some public subsidies which are provided. So there are certain conditions uh, quite favorable which can be improved still. So as for the experts, um, this year it may 
amount to $148 billion, all in all. I mean the non-energy and non-raw materials expert. And in September, we had zero increment. Then it was compensated at the expense of certain increases in supplies. But no one would guarantee that this growth, which we used to see since 2016, will continue. You have to apply more efforts. Means that uh, we no longer have this impetus uh, from the May decrease uh, signed by Mr. Putin. What other objectives uh, for the regions? We talked to a lot of governors, and we thought that probably we have to tell them uh, how good the expert is. So now there is no need for that. The regions really understand that. They have a real example in front of their eyes. Uh, the regional companies, which uh, see some future about that, they see how it may influence the regional economy. This is about increase in the revenues, uh, increase in the number of jobs. So it can boost technological development because companies feel the betrayed of the global markets and um, these are very expiring examples. People are inspired by that, and uh, all the governors are ready to develop uh, experts. Which, what objectives we have? Uh, bear in mind that uh, only 0.8% of the companies are exporting. We have uh, to bring together and focus on the imp increase in the number of uh, exporters. So there should be just more exporters than we are having at the moment. We have to bring certain indicators uh, to ram it home to the regional authorities. And the situation is very simple. If we want to get to double the number of exporting companies, so it means that we have to engage into acceleration about three times more companies than, the, than there is now, because the conversion rate would be a little bit less. So the accelerator is already prepared. We are doing that along with the program on the uh, labor productivity. And uh, we are picking up um, ideas. We are picking up uh, those who are ready for the experts. And we have a lot of stories of success. And in 2019, uh, 350 companies have to be engaged into the labor productivity improvement program. And uh, Natalia will tell you more about the accelerator and we'll make uh, a more detailed presentation at Sochi Economic Forum. This is our joint venture with Sberbank. And uh, some components would be placed on the bank of partners. So the third component is about Skolko. So we have about six accelerating programs which we're launching. And within the national projects period, about 3,000 companies will become exporters. All in all, the acceleration should embrace 120,000 companies. But uh, we have to focus on the acceleration. Well, the expert standard 2.0 was approved by the ex expert uh, committee. We have selected 10 regions as pilot ones, so the standard implies number of activities along the lines of the management, regional support, uh, technical and regional support measures for experts. And uh, actually, RETS is going to support it. Uh, subsidies would be provided. And we do have that in the framework of that process. Uh, first, the pilot project in 10 uh, our regions would be success, then others would follow, and uh, we will employ different um, uh, foreign um, commercial offices. As for the expert potential of the regions, back to your question, Mr. Moderator, I'm ready to provide necessary data, necessary figures, but we did such a distribution of the regions in some ranking. And so we have uh, three groups or five subgroups. Uh, 
uh, the ones with the high potential, with the medium potential, and uh, the regions with the low potential, or the one which has to be yet developed. This rating was done bearing in mind the logistics uh, opportunities, uh, industrial figures, and other factors. Following those categories, uh, the incremental indicators have been distributed. Now, these are the figures which will be implemented in the nearest future. We will provide both the financial and non-financial support and try to hope that corporate programs would enjoy more public subsidies. Apart from uh, general economic methods, uh, we can provide a targeted uh, support to the exporters. This is our main objective. Uh, Red Center, the expert support centers should uh, see a scheme where every group of exporters would enjoy guidance from a manager or supervisor. Thank you so much. From your words, I realize now that Russia has certain potential of increasing experts, but at the same time, um, setting or fitting into the cooperation chains. But at the same time, you said that uh, in Russia we see three groups or five subgroups, and Perm region probably is top on this uh, list top in the ranks, but if, for instance, we speak about Perm region, out of a big number of exporters which are present there, top 50 exporters would cover about 90% of the total export volume. But as for the rest, they would account only for 10%. So out of uh, this big number of companies uh, which account only for 5% of experts, how we give a boost to them. I pass the floor to the Minister of Economy of Perm region, and so this region is very interesting because last year they did a lot to improve the situation. The minister has an extensive experience. He graduated from the Moscow Academy of Finance. He graduated from the law faculty. He worked in Sibur. He worked in the fund for the single employer cities development. Maxim, Kalesnika Maxim, please. Colleagues, we really analyzed the structure of our experts and objectives, which and the federal objectives uh, which are put forward in front of our region. Really, the expert structure is quite interesting. In terms of the volume, we are among top 50 and uh, means that we export uh, to the tune of about uh, $5 billion and $3.7 billion. This is our non-energy, non-expert, non-commodity uh, expert. If we look deeper, uh, actually, Perm region um, supplies a lot of uh, fertilizers and uh, chemical reagents, and they account for 50% of the non-raw uh, materials or, or non-commodity uh, materials. Can we double that? Well, according to our expert opinion, increasing that business would account only by 25% by 2024. So it means that the rest of business should increase not um, three times, but it should triple so that we could uh, double the general volume of the non-energy and non-commodity experts. What we can do about that as uh, local authorities in order to reach those figures? We understand that reaching goals or attaining those figures um, is dependent on the Russian business community. If the companies do not trust the support measures which are being provided, then we will never see such figures in real life. <sighs> the main role of the regional authority. This is actually about uh, enjoying supervision on behalf of the companies which act as exporters already. So supervision should be provided in the following sense, first of all. You have to uh, 
somehow arrange for business missions under the aegis of the local authorities. It is very important for the companies which either are entering this area or only starting their experts or face certain difficulties in terms of entering the expert markets. So, so this year we plan for 10 business missions. They are targeted ones. So this is not just a separate or standalone program, which is invented by PERM. What we are doing, pulling among the exporters, what exhibitions are so interesting for you. So we make focus groups. And along with the colleagues, we uh, go to that country. And always the results are quite interesting. Second block of things we do. This is about infrastructure. Infrastructure is not uh, enough yet. This is a legal infrastructure which we are developing and uh, this is the physical infrastructure along with RCD. We are doing some debottlenecking in order to carry the products on the railway. So we're exporting products and services. Now we have an investor and we are implementing a very ambitious uh, project on building a campus for foreign students. We have more than 2.5 thousand uh, students uh, from other countries who study in uh, Perm universities, and they need certain infrastructure. Another important story, this is about uh, setting up uh, the one-stop shop uh, support centers, unfortunately. We run into the situation when our exporters, our companies, um, under certain, due to certain reasons, do not know anything about the measures of support or are afraid of applying for that. So the main objective of this uh, expert support center is to explain every measure of support to the companies in order to boost the experts. Andre already said about the accelerators, and we develop that in general. This is at the regional level where the acceleration programs have to be developed. The very first pilot accelerator would be launched this year, and we expect um, that uh, 50 companies uh, will be accelerated, would be boosted at the very first stage, so that in future some expert contracts or agreements would be signed. We provide some uh, practical uh, value, meaning that uh, the companies which are invited to the accelerator are included into the business missions immediately. Thank you so much. Thank you, Maxim Kolesnikov, and next speaker, uh, credited from GIMO in 1996 uh, from uh, the International Economics um, Faculty, and then. The organizers uh, provided a full list of his titles. This is a member of uh, the um, Supervisory Council of uh, the Russian Academy of Sciences, of the Russian Chamber of Commerce, etc., etc. Andrei Simakovich. May I shoot on this list saying that Andrei is a very profound scientist and not a single decision taken by the government can be taken without him. He is a corresponding member of the Academy of Sciences and professor and doctor. This goes without saying. Andrei Spartak, when we're speaking about uh, experts, we do believe that uh, oil, automobiles, uh, instrumentation, how this is what we are exporting, but in essence, Russia is exporting services as well. And uh, people do not know anything about that. We know that we have a very sophisticated uh, services classification system, and it's very difficult to understand where and how these services are provided. Do we have any future there? Well, let me tell you that the expert uh, Activity may be a success only when you are accompanied by people who represent different public uh, services, uh, creative people, people who are not indifferent. 
real professionals. And at this panel, I see most of people meet these requirements. Mr. Salomatov, ex uh, Minister for Trade and Commerce of the European Commission, and others. So that's very good when we have such a combination. In terms of the services, this is a very interesting topic due to many reasons. You know that a lot has been changed uh, due to globalization. A lot's been uh, changed. Uh, and uh, many commodity niches uh, have limited future. First of all, this is about uh, raw material semi-finished products. Um, so due to uh, different substitutes, uh, certain products are eliminated from the market. But there are a lot of services which can be traded in digital. Digital becomes a versatile environment. And due to new technologies, more and more services are involved in the digital environment. And the services which uh, have never been traded before become quite tradable. We cannot look at the services sector. We have to look at the services sector as a very attractive product. We are underperforming in service trading. and. Uh, Services account for 23 uh, percent uh, in the rest of the world, and in Russia, uh, actual services export uh, accounts for 13 percent. So our share in the services market is a little bit more than one percent. And in terms of commodities, you know that we are a little bit more than two percent, and used to be three percent in the fat years. So it means that this is a very promising sphere. Industry 4.0 and the business models which are being set up will be dependent on the services, not only not on the products or commodities. And uh, it is well known that uh, uh, more and more manufacturing industry is being focusing on services. More and more products. Uh, are being produced the way that uh, they have, they will have certain consumer value only once it is accompanied by certain uh, services, uh, for instance, the gadgets. And this process is on the rise. Regional added value chains uh, lose their materiality. The products and uh, goods exchange is replaced with a data exchange and with a services exchange. That's the future. And uh, at the same time, we see that Russia really can fit into that chain, and we can claim the leadership in this uh, uh, certification process. When everything becomes uh, service-centric, this is a burgeoning process. We have very good programmers. We reached very good uh, achievements in experts of technological services, uh, of uh, the ICT services, uh, and the list is huge. This is a list of services uh, which help us to earn very good money. The president also uh, signed a decree to reach the figure of $250 billion worth of experts of goods. And in terms of the services, the figure is also quite immense. If we look at this year's uh, uh, figures, we may boast 15% uh, 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 growth in terms of experts uh, compared to 2018. So this growth is uh, not broken down evenly. So uh, there would be some growth in uh, transportation, growth in services, and uh, these kinds of services would grow more dramatically. Educational services also grow. When medical students uh, come from abroad, and um, if um, Russian students go abroad to study, that would be a different item. So generally speaking, the situation now is quite favorable in terms of uh, the services experts. If we grow by 15% every year until 2024, we will outperform uh, 
the 100 billion dollar worth of experts, which is our milestone, our KPI. The average growth in terms of services is uh, no more than 8%. And um, last year, we boasted the growth of 15%. So what else I can tell you about the services? This is a totally new topic. So the central bank now is publishing more data about uh, the uh, services. Central bank's website provides information about all the commercial services, but for the insurance ones. In some time, they say but that by the end of the year, probably they will publish more data about uh, transportation and tourist services. And in that case, we'll have a full picture of the regions. I'm speaking about the distribution of the services by the region. When we meet Paul. By the end of the year, we'll have a full picture on the regions and we'll be able to begin to analyze. Uh, of course, not completely, but some analysis could can be made. Now we see that export of um, uh, goods and services is unevenly distributed. 56% is uh, for Moscow, 10% for St. Petersburg, 5% for the Moscow Oblast, and 5% uh, for the Nizhny Novgorod, and 3.5% for uh, the Moscow Oblast. So 75% uh, come from four uh, units, uh, four regions. Uh. So it is necessary to uh, change uh, things. Uh, and uh, we have about 7 to 8% which are not distributed among uh, regions. It's a new t uh, type of data which is to be assessed. These are uh, services provided by individuals and individual entrepreneurs. Uh, this is a category of which is very promising, as we believe. Uh, but in uh, 2018, about one billion dollars uh, is in intellectual and creatively technological services. Uh, about two billion by the end of the year. So now we have about 2 billion, and I do not count uh, uh, services connected with building, processing goods, or repairs and uh, maintenance. It's something different. Uh, uh, what's interesting here is the billion, uh, which is uh, at the level uh, which uh, is made within half a year and uh, 2 billion in a whole year. Uh, all which is provided by individuals and individual entrepreneurs. I believe that uh, Russia must uh, use the potential of regulation to the full for electronic uh, transactions uh, when uh, services are provided via Internet uh, and do all it can to support the efforts of our freelancers. Uh, in view of the new opportunities provided by cloud computation, global online platforms. Here there are no long chain uh, chains. We are not strong in long chains, uh, but individual creative work is very, we are very good at uh, individual creative work. And this provides an opportunity to, get, to make money for uh, large sections of uh, the population. So we have, pu uh, we have put the emphasis on making the reporting as simple as possible on transactions via internet. Uh, these are the first steps, but nonetheless, uh, it is extremely important and uh, to uh, wrap up, I would like to stress, uh, as Andrei Alexander spoke about acceleration, accelerators, this is also meant for those who provide uh, services, service providers. Uh, service providers have the advantage uh, uh, because their interests are supported not only in the framework of support of international cooperation and expert, but in the many in many other national projects like uh, the public uh, health, uh, edu public education, envi the environment project. We have the uh, development of uh, env environmental tourism and as part of uh, medical tourism is extremely important. It is a platform which uh, the regions can use very actively and structure their own policy and add it to federal programs uh, 
Uh, within the framework of the uh, digital economy project, we have uh, a special entry on uh, improving digital services. Uh, it can be, uh, to a great extent, a regional priority for uh, exploitation of services. Uh, uh, those projects uh, help to mobilize uh, service exporters, uh, which uh, support ex uh, which are supported by our uh, uh, by the institutions of the state that support the export. And uh, to f end up uh, to end uh, my presentation, I will say just two words: the support of small exporters, especially those who sell digital services, uh, is very much. Uh, there is uh, done very much by providing loans, uh, and here we have certain problems, uh, uh, like uh, uh, with the non-material assets. Uh, and here, uh, the regions could provide some quasi-guarantees. They could certify people who provide such services in order to facilitate their access to state support. And uh, second, uh, such exporters have a greater spend a greater share of money on promotion, on uh, setting up. Uh, virtual offices, etc. And here the regions could uh, uh, pro offer certain uh, local programs in addition to what the federal cent center gives for the it is for for individual providers of uh, service uh, as of service export <laughs> uh, the uh, image, uh, the, the maintenance of the image abroad uh, is of great importance. Thank you very much, Andrei uh, Nikolaevich. Uh, you are a real scholar. You have paid uh, uh, enough attention to the issue of the financial support for ex export of services and goods. And here we should say that we have a bank uh, which uh, invests a lot in uh, uh, in, I, in IT te technologies introduction to their work. And this bank is different by the fact that uh, very long ago, when other banks uh, did not yet uh, think about that, it set up a division for external economic uh, uh, activities. Uh, the bank ha has very proactive uh, position in this field. Natalia Goludina, uh, you have a guest that uh, uh, you will be the next speaker. Uh, Andrei said that uh, uh, there, are, uh, there is a system of support uh, for exporters, uh, it ha but he didn't mention that uh, it was created one year ago. And I think that Ms. Uh, Golu Goludina can uh, uh, sum up uh, all this work, and can you tell us uh, while doing this uh, uh, if there is a regional aspect in your work, or do you give uh, equal opportunities to everyone? Let me start in the order of the questions. Uh, let's remember the past. Uh, we used uh, to provide classical services for uh, customers and the field of uh, currency control, provided consulting services. Uh, Etc. And by the end of 2016, we understood that uh, uh, the role of uh, an agent uh, of uh, currency control is not something very valuable or necessary for the client. And so we have conducted several sessions with our active customers, and we have found out that. Uh, they have a lot of questions on the development of their activities in other states uh, or other or states other in which they have already developed their activities. And, they, and uh, it is possible to find new markets, to enter such markets. Um, you can use different methods, and you can look them up in uh, or Google, but uh, to get a clear picture, how long, how will it, uh, what will it look like, uh, how much will it cost, uh, how much time will it uh, take? Uh, well, it's not so easy, and uh, 
uh, when you understand that you enter a new market, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, make money and uh, pay for the services with, for, of those who helped uh, you to do it. And we have different customers. There are some customers who have been successfully exporting to a great number of countries and who can teach something to us. Uh, but uh, they also can have some problems. Uh, uh, they have been uh, uh, resolving them, but uh, uh, it took them too much time and it was not uh, cheap. And so we could help them here. And so first we came, we went to the Russian Expert uh, Center and the center put us in touch with the Ministry of Economic Development because then the Ministry of Economic Development had uh, physical uh, representative offices uh, who could help, there were people who could help, uh, could help to find uh, a partner, business partner, a living business partner, and uh, do the preliminary work with him. And so, every, as everyone wanted to help the client, the customer, everybody understood that it was necessary. So we decided uh, uh, to pursue this goal. We uh, have uh, we began to draw up uh, a roadmap, and uh, we understood that. Uh, Everyone had his own view of the client. Uh, we have our own experience, our own cases, and uh, the others also had their cases and their own experience. And so the Russian Expert Center has provided us a lot or a broad range of services. And we understood the customer in different ways. Everyone had uh, their own forms. Uh, uh, according to which the client, the customer had to tell us about uh, himself. And so we understood that we should um, uh, should make one, one single digital uh, form so that the customer would not need to, um, uh, to fill in lots of uh, different forms and look up different uh, websites and uh, uh, get lost in this. And not every uh, even motivated exporter could reach the end of this uh, way. So we set up a team of three partners. And the first thing uh, that we did was to ask our colleagues in the Southwestern Bank and the re representative office in the, uh, of the Russian Express Center in rostov on don uh, to find a prospect prospective uh, uh, exporters and we have we went to the market and uh, we had a lot of insights but we found out that the existing uh, meth methods uh, did not uh, work really well and uh, uh, thanks to Andrei Alexandrovich, uh, this, uh, who entered this uh, program in late May we have changed we changed this program uh, it used to be uh, a one-stop shop, and then we decided to use an export accelerator. So every day we communicate with the customers, uh, or, and we have a network of customers. Uh, we don't need uh, uh, to uh, build it up, and the Russian Expert Center is a very good uh, center, which provides very good uh, services. Uh, and to organize a simple, easy to understand step-by-step -step, uh, method of providing such services and easy uh, transfer to other partners. We have other trade representatives. We have uh, very good uh, uh, companies which uh, uh, work, uh, which do their own uh, job, for example, logistics companies. And in order to preserve uh, this uh, chain, uh, we need to work a lot. And now uh, we have to spend a lot of time to understand this way and to learn it. And after that, we get a clear individual development plan. And we have a special uh, bank manager. We have a special uh, hub. Uh, which contains a sector of uh, export accelerator. And the essence of this uh, management can be done in this accelerator, uh, which uh, is uh, posted on indexpartner.com. 
But those questions, this uh, insecurity, uh, which uh, uh, the next question, uh, or which, in, which is of concern to the exporter now, is not to lose this way. And there are differences if there are any dis uh, the question was uh, whether there are any differences between the regions. And I should say, yes, that um, there are differences between uh, among regions. Uh, there are some units of the federation. There are some units of the federation which have uh, already started uh, 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 started uh, uh, hooking up, uh, uh, starting getting the approvals of uh, the official uh, official uh, efforts uh, in uh, at its own level. Uh, they are more informed, and uh, some regions which are uh, twice uh, as reflected in our platform as uh, the other uh, regions uh, because they are in a situation of discussing trans uh, discussions because our regional platforms are not just accelerators, but they uh, put you in touch with economic uh, 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 partners. Uh, we can say whether this, whether you should uh, spend time on this uh, part prospective partner, whether it is a fake partner, and this uh, regional information is very I important. And such customers uh, are more ready. They are already in a warm state, so they understand they need resources. So we are not opening anything completely new to them. Uh, revealing anything new. They knew that they need certain certificates and other things, and they are ready uh, for that. And coming back to uh, one of your questions, what has this year of work shown? Uh, it has shown that we need a digital way, and uh, things must be done online. Uh, this sh should not be seminars uh, to which people come, uh, where everybody uh, ex uh, explains everything to people. Yes, yeah, such things are necessary. Let, us be, uh, let them be uh, business fairs uh, or ex ex uh, exhibitions, but uh, the whole chain of uh, exportation must be done online. And uh, this is possible to be done in the export accelerator. And you can get a, a broad range of, uh, uh, inform of education uh, uh, information, and not uh, just information about everything, but some specific information which you need at a specific uh, stage. If you want to export uh, your goods now, you will go through the module of goods adaptation now in order to know what sort of uh, what sort of, of adaptation must be done. So we um, hope uh, that our cl customers uh, who are in this program and who are already actively involved in it will do will achieve a lot and that next time we will talk you about uh, tell you about uh, new partners new contracts new countries with which we have uh, uh, been put in contact but it's better to see things than to hear about them you have not uh, told us uh, uh, the address web address of your portal of the website it is called bank of partners dot com the and for those who like uh, a long uh, command uh, um, command uh, line, and you can, and for the new generation, you can uh, just uh, 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 put BBP in Yandex or Google, and uh, it will in the second line you will come to the site uh, bankofpartners.com. Uh, and you can uh, see the offer, so you can uh, go into the export accelerator and go through uh, pre-export diagnostics. And it will show that if you have a real case, not a fake one, but if you have a real case of a real company or your company specifically, it will show how much you are ready for this or not ready for this. And it will show, uh, if you are not ready, it will show what you should, done to be, to, should do to be ready. So we put BBP in the search line 
and then uh, the browser will show you or you bbp.com and we'll get into b no bbp.com no bbp is uh, the user's name uh, the domain is called bankofpartners.com and Andrei Alexandrovich uh, has correctly noted that we will have a special uh, uh, booth at uh, the Sochi exhibition and here we'll show you the uh, we'll show everybody who would reach our uh, booth we will show how you can go through expert diagnostics uh, pre expert diagnostics and to show uh, what uh, measures are to be taken uh, so that you would understand the essence of these things, so that you would understand what should be done by what deadline, uh, based on your pre-export uh, diagnostics, and what is most important, uh, it will show who can help you, and from the same window you can you can work uh, to so BBP. Uh, let's look. Uh, we don't need to wait for such. It will be in the second uh, 10 days of uh, February. I think that when we come back here and discuss the subject in Sochi, we will say that we are not just uh, re uh, ready to applaud you, but that we have some proposals uh, to develop the system. But when Andrei Sharov, whom I know very well, has uh, met you, Today he said that today Natalia will announce uh, for sure uh, some very interesting uh, ideas connect connected with VAT for uh, small scale or medium scale business exports. Uh, or, or perhaps, uh, perhaps he has misled me. Well, you don't leave us any any space uh, for mystery uh, to be revealed at next uh, uh, at the following uh, events uh, well we know our speakers well within the framework of the one stop shop uh, uh, service together with the federal tax service and uh, the treasury we are doing a product called express Pratodels, and for it uh, was first uh, presented uh, on the 12th of december at the digital uh, digital uh, technologies uh, event in moscow and we are planning in sochi to show not a prototype but a working in working tool just in one uh, window in the clean bank, uh, the customer gets a reminder. You have a contact uh, on which you can get back your VAT if you like. Uh, you, we can do that. If you press the button, the customer creates the declaration and uh, all the documents are attached, all the necessary documents are attached, uh, the contracts, uh, customs declarations, etc. You know what uh, you have in the bank because the bank uh, accompanies the economic, uh, the economic uh, uh, the data on uh, your customer. Well, so it takes seven days. In England, they do it three days. I hope very much that we will uh, keep catch up with England in, in one year. Thank you, Natalia. So remember, BBP. Just uh, uh, let's look it up and get ready for Sochi. Uh, let's go on here. We have now a very interesting person, uh, someone, a graduate of the Urals uh, University, who also studied uh, at the higher school of corporate management uh, and at the same time he graduated from the Moscow management school in Skolkova in, in Tatarstan a perfectly unique cluster is being created we understand uh, when we hear the word cluster then this is a limited territory diff different uh, ways of uh, uh, different activities uh, behind the same fence well Mr. Mayorov uh, Sergey Mayorov will talk to you to s about something more interesting. Uh, he called it a cluster, but uh, uh, 13 or 14 countries have enterprises there on the same uh, digital 
platform where you can make a very good transaction. You can order, edit a, a, a part of a machinery in Switzerland and then assemble it in Tatarstan. Thank you very much, Vladimir. It is uh, for the 19th uh, year that I have studied within the walls of this academy. I continue this. Uh, one needs uh, le to le learning uh, throughout uh, his life. Now I'll speak about the prospects of uh, a cluster of using cluster mechanisms in export. Uh, usually, for clusters, for us are uh, joint uh, projects of uh, the state, uh, business, and science on limited territory, where everywhere. Everyone has his own role. The state supports the clusters with money, subsidies, and also with innovations. And the business turns innovations into innovative products which can compete with foreign goods. The main purpose of any cluster is uh, to achieve uh, uh, through development of cooperation the production of such innovative products. And what are the objectives to achieve this goal? To he help uh, a member of the cluster to open his, uh, uh, his uh, economic ac activities abroad, uh, we are talking about exports. And only global producers can uh, occupy a uh, real place in the international market. And second is promotion of the products of the cluster, including beyond the borders of the Russian Federation. And let us uh, look at the uh, fourth uh, slide, how the international experience of clusterization uh, looks uh, abroad. The number of clusters, the funding of clusters, which is uh, which I would like to discuss. Let's look at our experience. It w there was a wonderful, the idea of creating 27 innovative clusters by the Ministry of Economic Development was great. Uh, was a great idea. Uh, there was a lot of funding. The uh, enterprises uh, liked it, uh, and uh, about 90 percent of costs were funded. And now in Tatarstan, we have a cluster of machine building, uh, which is uh, believed and trusted, which is trusted, sorry, by enterprises, and it helps to achieve uh, good results not only inside Russia but also abroad. And we see that uh, uh, about 50 percent of uh, clusters uh, are funded abroad. I don't know wh what happened to the ministry, but uh, the uh, cluster funding has been suspended. I don't know why, but this is not a step forward. It is a step uh, uh, back or a setback. Uh, the, uh, in, uh, the, in clusters in Italy, uh, Germany, and Austria, and even Kazakhstan, a membership of uh, non-governmental organizations uh, is uh, obligatory. And uh, uh, our clusters do not, are not doing this. Uh, they are. Uh, but the what the clusters are doing uh, abroad is uh, making the industries competitive uh, on the world market. They collect information, they analyze it, uh, they conduct market studies uh, or market research, and they make recommendations to members of the clusters to how to structure their strategies for the next 10 to <coughs> 20 or even 25 years. The next slide shows what we have been talking about today, what we have been doing is participation in various events. And of course, we have a bit more understanding. We have a direct connection with our consumers. We communicate with our cluster members on a day-to-day -day basis. And next cluster, our next slide shows uh, business statistics, how many international missions uh, how we have conducted. We conduct supplies days, uh, including with foreign companies. We sign agreements with various countries. Uh, 
from Canada to Hong Kong, uh, such as the, our geographic scope, uh, we uh, conduct information exchange. We take part in uh, joint events, which helps to implement inter joint projects. And the next slide uh, shows, as Vladimir has spoken, uh, national subcontracting. Subcontract we have uh, already not 14, but 15 countries. Uh, there, there are more of them since our uh, meet, last meeting, latest meeting, and new, uh, and new orders have been received. The prototypes are created, tests are being done, certification is being done, everything which is necessary uh, for the new production. The next slide shows how uh, e what is the easiest way to enter global markets using the opportunities provided by foreign companies uh, which, are, uh, which have been localized uh, in the Russian Federation and uh, sometimes the localization is up to 70%. If we learn to supply the goods to such uh, factories and similar factories, the, we will be recommended uh, uh, as members of uh, their global uh, supplies network. Now slide number 10. What are the barriers which prevent us from going, uh, uh, from going to the international markets? With all the ramifications, so this is about equality and the cost of product production. This is a very serious barrier which may result in the fact that 0.8% uh, of companies may export their products abroad. Why this happen? The profitability level in the engineering industry doesn't allow the companies to invest into their development and development. They just don't have money for that. So although rest of the world actually every five years have to replace the equipment and um, selling the obsolete uh, machinery to some second-rated companies. So we're expecting some measures of support from the state and hopefully this year we'll see something. Then lack of fluency in foreign languages. This is another barrier. This is what's been said already. So the planning horizon or strategic planning horizon uh, this is uh, the level of municipalities of the region, and so not many many companies are planning to export products um, to um, other Russian cities. It would be great if our trade and commerce offices abroad are used not only for some business missions and certain one-on-one -on -one meetings, because they will not bring any results. They should provide us with some analytics and marketing uh, results, what every country buys, we are eager to buy. This is a rather expensive information, but it has to be accessible to the potential exporters who are going to accelerate and boost. In that case, they would know, for instance, that I may supply this many products to that country and this many products to that country. It would be very good for our potential exporters. Uh, naturally. No subsidies and uh, no uh, funding for the basic polymer products and uh, raw materials. So our economy depends on energy experts and the commodity experts were supporting the energy industry and becoming energy intensive. For instance, so once the ruble depreciates, uh, the whole uh, market uh, actually is focusing on the um, crude experts, gas experts, and um, ferrous metals experts. So non-ferrous metals are sold uh, in Russia at the expert prices level. LME prices are being used for the domestic sales. Actually, if we do something about that, then we will increase the number of exporters in Russia more than 0.8%. Next slide. This is about uh, the exports to China, for instance. We did some sophisticated uh, product, such as um, reprocessing of the secondary raisin, and China would like to close all the dirty production sites. And for instance, we sold 32 machines uh, to China and signed an agreement to sell 103 more machines there. But take care. 
So in China, there is a rule that uh, they have to buy sophisticated uh, machinery only once. So later on, they are to replicate that on their own and to reproduce it. So the second agreement uh, to sell 104 machines more uh, is uh, never signed. We may make any metal products. So within a year, we opened an office in Cologne, and uh, we would like to turn to the Russian Expert Center to help us with the certification to sell products to the United States market. So these are the facade fixtures. Some small thing, but actually it's sold very well in Germany. Some exhaust pipes uh, for um, kitchens, for instance. Um, this is only because we now foreign languages. So we are fluent in foreign languages, and that's why we can do that. Another project where we can move forward in terms of experts. Um, next slide, please. Acting through the services. This is what our colleague already said. We appoint an engineering club, just nothing special. But we gathered in one space uh, competences of technical universities, and uh, we invite the enterprises which still have good, excellent engineers. And the European Union told us this is a very good project. And uh, we have prepared a technological platform with the colleagues from Kazakhstan and Belarus. On June 29th, we'll have a final meeting. And after this project is uh, approved by five prime ministers, uh, it would be about a supranational project. So we are substituting imported machinery. So the servicing of the imported uh, machinery is very expensive, and uh, you may add to the cost of the spare parts. But this is the service which may be demanded for. And slide number 17, please. This is an example of uh, how a presentation of a uh, national project. Uh, this is what we presented to Mr. Minikhanov and uh, uh, German Saxonia minister. So we presented this project uh, and uh, 10 days after German companies uh, applied for certain services to be provided by our companies. Thank you so much. I take advantage of this opportunity to invite you to Tatarstan. Not only you can do business very well there, but we're very hospitable at the same time. Thank you so much, Sergei Mayurov. Thank you for what you are doing and what your team is doing. That's very, very crucial. That's an important page in the history of our industry. And uh, Mr. Teplov is from Vnishekano Bank RF. So Vnish Econom Bank now is called web.rf. It set up a joint venture which is called Vnish Econom Bank Innovations. They are transferring technologies. And uh, one of the main objectives of your activity is to sign agreements. Uh, December 2017, the government of Perm and Web Innovations uh, announced uh, setting up a venture fund in order to improve the expert potential of the region. Is it true? That's true. Thank you so much. So, Mr. Teplov, the floor is yours. I got from the presentation of for Mr. Mayorov that transfer of technology is very crucial for you in order to um, reach the top-notch quality. To be fair, let me tell you that uh, technology transfer is not the only thing we do, and um, actually, uh, the government of the Russian Federation uh, set up more agencies to do that. But really, Vnishekanam Bank Innovations, this is a part of uh, Vnishekanam Bank.rf. Uh, holding and we partner with uh, uh, different other associations. We are a young company. Our main objective is to co-fund high-tech and highly productive projects, not only in Russia, but abroad. At the stage after, they no longer are regarded as startups. We have a lot of tools to support entrepreneurs and science, starting from Skolkova Fund and uh, ending with uh, Bortnikov and Russian Venture Company, which are very much helpful 
in making innovative ideas come true, but in essence, they are building new markets because the expert is not only about what markets do exist at the moment. Expert, this is about setting up new markets. And uh, this is why we have two public programs. One is called uh, Digital Economy, and the second is called National and Technological Initiatives. Really, one of the key objectives for us is to set up a regional network of venture funds together with uh, the local governments of the regions and uh, local entrepreneurs, local venture companies in order to build the flow of potential exporters uh, who will later on turn for the support uh, to the venture funds and to, to the banks in order to bring their products abroad. Such a chain of uh, funds uh, is only in this infancy, and Perm region is one of the pilot. Uh, once pilot projects, so we have signed three agreements with the Akutia, Ekaterinburg, and Perm region. We plan to add four regions more in, nine, in 2019. This way, we will get uh, an additional chain of uh, seeking new ideas and new startups, which are developed not only at the regional level, as we said, and which change their view of uh, their activity, and so uh, they no longer um, have ambitions to develop only within their municipality, but uh, are eager to expand within Russia and to uh, even go beyond the Russian borders. Not always the Russian market is enough in order to make a company or a new innovative uh, success. For that, probably they have to go to the foreign markets immediately. That's why setting up original funds on the one hand will help us making this bridge. As an example, Multikubik, this is the Russian company, which produces a niche product Many in that uh, they are showing cartoons to the children on certain film slides. And uh, all of a sudden, India got interested in that product. And so uh, we will bring this company abroad. Certainly, we would need certain instruments, certain tools, which other colleagues already have as a venture company. We commit ourselves to carry the risk of their first attempt, and then if everything goes well, then we turn to our colleagues for assistance and help. But there is a big potential about that. Setting up new technologies, this is one of the tools which would help us to not only to reach the goals which we put forward for the national projects, such as increasing the expert to the tune of 250 billion dollars, and uh, there are 10 new markets to be set up by 2030. Uh, when the market is uh, attributed to a new one, this should be a market with the turnover of $100 billion, and this should be done by 2030. Setting up new startups, new projects. We are setting up new global markets. Yesterday, a uh, supervisory board of the Strategic Initiatives Agency was held, and uh, some reports were made. And Dmitry Peskov, one of the evangelists and uh, masterminders of uh, this project, said that there are fewer and fewer startups every year. And we have to go to the regions in order to understand where we can find more startups. What an expert potential of the region is about for startups. This is a set of several factors. 
So the local authorities should not be indifferent. And they have to bring necessary favorable conditions for the startups to grow. There should be some entrepreneurship community capable of picking up uh, those startup ideas. And there should be also a university or R&D potential, which may help to implement those ideas. And our colleague from Tatarstan was right, saying that we bring science to innovations and bring them to the real economy. This is one of the key objectives. And uh, Nishikana Bank RF is uh, working with the regions to set up a network to support entrepreneurship and to, to take care and make sure that uh, companies grow from startups to something bigger. Dear colleagues, I would like to pass the floor to a person who I uh, got acquainted a bit earlier, but I saw the potential of this person at uh, a forum on the expert development in PIRM. Michael, do you have a red badge or not? Yes, oh, I do see it. This is not just a budge. This is not just a nice red dot which attracts attention to such a nice looking person. But this is also a symbol of Udmurtia. That's a republic in Russia. And uh, Michael is doing a lot in order to advertise this republic. Over the last uh, several years, experts from Udmurtia doubled, and uh, they have a broad range of products which they expert. Work which is being done uh, not only is aimed at advertising the products among the foreign exporters, but also uh, importers, but also among the Russian companies. So, yeah, Deputy Prime Minister of uh, Republic of Udmurtia, tell us, please, what can you do to make the region very proactive in experts' operations? Well, I think that, first of all, you don't have to prevent it from uh, growing, and entrepreneurs will do that on their own. So, if, for instance, you repeat BBP six times, uh, and uh, for instance, if uh, the entrepreneurs uh, actually fail to Google these, uh, these letters, then probably it doesn't make sense to support him. But I fully agree with what Andrew said, that all the barriers are on your mind. So this is about the mindset. Anyone can export products. This is the first thing we started with when we entered the region. When entrepreneurs uh, keep telling you that you cannot export products, you may say, oh, but you know, how many exporters are there in Udmurtia? Have a look. Probably, you know, um, a collider, the collider. So, so there are some products, uh, some uh, spare parts provided from uh, uh, Udmurtia, from the city of Glasgow to Switzerland. You know that uh, uh, actually the Olympic champion um, in um, arts uh, gymnastics um, are dressed in overalls and uh, suits uh, produced in uh, Udmurtia. And uh, the American Knife Sharpening Association uh, actually acknowledged Murti as the best uh, knife sharpener. And uh, a startup which uh, uh, moves uh, the image from the screen of your mobile phone onto the windshield of a car also was launched in Udmurtia. So once we have such cases, then everything is possible. Everything and anything is possible. Our export uh, grew 2.4 times, and we are number two in terms of expert growth. Um, probably this is because Mr. Brichalov, the very first message he made was about uh, Udmurtia, part of the global world, meaning that we can uh, do not have to compete with the other republics. You have to believe that you can compete with the foreign companies. This is a totally new criterion. You have to be competitive not only in your district, not only in your republic, but you have to be competitive at a global level. This is a very difficult thing to believe in. We have to popularize this story. And the second trend 
which uh, becomes uh, more and more pronounced, that's uh, increasing the number of business missions. So I'm the only representative of the business mission because actually it used to be seen as something for bureaucrats. But now any business mission is about CRM, Customs Relations Management. Uh, thanks to, I used to speak in front of the uh, trade and commercial representatives, about 30 people in Russia, and I said, we arrived to this country on CRM and also had uh, the CRM department from my republic, and I have a status a title from every, for instance, company. So, for instance, Asbuka Fkusa company. So I put down certain figures, and I see that not all people understand what CRM is, and uh, people are totally different. So, uh, for instance, some people do know what client relation management is about, but others actually do not understand what I was speaking about. So one of the factors behind the success is whether the trade and commerce offices are ready to become the sales advisors and sales departments of certain companies. And once this happens, once they are really protecting the interests of the companies they represent, a revolution will take place. Online is another trend. Uh, this is a very pronounced trend. Quite recently, we received eBay um, company, Ilya Kretov, an athlete, a representative of this company, and we set up a joint venture. So a guy emerges who does some impregnation for some kind of wood and got registered on eBay. And in a week's time, he's ready to sell to the United States. When you see this happening, you understand that this is a new trend. And we may go 25 times to China telling that we'll conquer everything without any success, or just like we did with Alibaba. We can send an agreement, and that's it. Because entering uh, the Chinese market may take hundreds and hundreds of years, but uh, those actually who are lazy enough may take an elevator called um, Alibaba. And uh, the volumes would be small, but such cases are really very inspiring. And I would like to finish my presentation, bearing in mind that I'm between you and the evening. I was quite lucky. Uh, 18 months ago, I was the one to develop uh, the best accelerator in uh, Skolkovo um, Startup Academy. And uh, when I was appointed to Udmurti um, government, uh, I decided immediately to launch an accelerator. We were the very first one among the regions to, uh, to launch an accelerator, along with Splot Company. Probably you heard about uh, Splot. This is about toothpaste. Uh, Alexei Domin is the head of this company. And we thought to who we are to teach them how to export products. So the ones who are doing experts should teach others to expert. And we did the very first accelerator. We dragged by force um, five companies into that accelerator. Two were expelled, and but um, three companies remained, and uh, they were certified. And uh, we thought that probably this was the very right story. So now, together with the Russian Expert Center, we are training OPK companies in that. And uh, our region used to be very closed one, not a closed city or secret city, but this is a secret region. When we have 12 companies from the defense industry, you cannot train them, but they uh, actually committed themselves to do some conversion, to move from the military to the civil products. And uh, I do believe that uh, we will make 12 out of 12 companies exporting their products abroad, although probably it will never take place. And once we analyzed the latest accelerator, we made a list of uh, the factors of success. There are several factors of success or a failure I'm ready to share with you. First of all, you have to ensure the attention from the local government. I have a chat with uh, certain companies which uh, actually are involved in the accelerator. 
So I'm doing some supervision, and the head of the region have to be has to be a part of that process. So the company's management has to be part of that process. They have to be trained because some people who were included into the accelerator they just dispatched or seconded. Uh, some rank and file specialist, and um, that time you just call them and say that this uh, is uh, not right. You have to second uh, a top manager, a representative of the owner. And another thing is that your apprenticeship and supervision actually should be promoted. Um, supervision actually, this is a very vague word in Russia. One of the guys said that uh, my supervisor is German Griff, and I said, oh, good for you, and how it comes. And he said, I once uh, heard his lecture on radio, on the radio, so. And uh, there should be some meetings on a regular basis. Every month or every six weeks, uh, there should be meetings uh, with those who are ready to export. And we check the box whether they met or not met. If you don't do something in your life regularly, then it means that you don't do anything at all. So this is a very famous uh, rule for the sports world. Together with the companies which already started exporting, we are we are trying to develop this uh, supervision and apprenticeship model and. Uh, I also would recommend uh, to expel certain stakeholders, certain participants in the accelerator. Is this uh, just, for instance, for low performance? This is a very sobering moment. And when, for instance, I hear about BBP programs still online or remote education, distance learning, this is, uh, well, not very good because uh, this is not motivating. Once you pay for your education and may be expelled for low performance, then probably this is very motivating. That's a very interesting thing. So I will totally agree with you. That's why we have a schedule with a final plan. And uh, the failure to complete certain stage uh, is one of the reasons to be expelled. And for instance, uh, one of my friends said that if I tell people in uh, the underground in the metro, they would think that I'm crazy. But if uh, the same people have to pay 300,000 rubles for my lecture, then they would think that I'm a genius. We first launched those courses in Moscow, and but the people had to um, pay for their tickets for their accommodation, so it provided some motivation. I do think that I have uh, highlighted certain things uh, typical of accelerators. So. And the Russian Expert Center, I wish you every success. And we'll try not to let you down. Thank you so much. You can be anyone on my list because your presentations are always bright. So we have time for three questions. Please, first question and two more questions. Take the mic. Lady, please pass on the mic. Good afternoon, uh, Ivan Starika from the Russian Academy of Sciences. My question goes to Andrei Spartak. I am a champion of uh, Russia's agriculture. So 11 months are left until the law on organic production uh, would be enforced. And uh, I have made a business plan for S7 company, which is called now S7 Aerospace Corporation. So the essence of this proposition is as follows. So uh, they have the turnover of about uh, 17 million passengers. And in several years, um, their passenger flow would be about 20 million, uh, especially after our float is banned from going abroad. So the main essence of my proposition is as follows. I suggested to make a catering program. I'm finishing the uh, business plan providing for organic um, feeding on board and have a green label so and certainly for the first class passengers and business class passengers. So my question is, are we ready a year prior to the law coming into force to 
uh, make sure that we have necessary number of exporters who would um, ensure supplies of different agricultural certified products uh, to this catering company. Second question. In compliance with uh, Decree 224, as far as we're speaking about decrees, can we say that the onboard catering, which goes from here to abroad, cannot be regarded as an agricultural non-energy and non-raw material? Um, uh, experts, because it would account for $45 billion, probably. Well, as we are KPI, uh, and if uh, it fl flies away, uh, we are all for it. As for organic uh, agriculture, yes, uh, we had uh, an event on uh, digital transformation uh, of uh, of the uh, export, and we believe uh, the, of the agri of the agricultural industrial complex. Uh, or we everybody said that we have had a good practice of using means of protection of uh, plants, uh, fertilize, etc. And there is uh, a, a great uh, demand for it and so on. We have a problem. Uh, one of our problems is opening up markets, especially meat markets. Uh, and uh, uh, today there has been an article published uh, uh, that uh, we are so uh, that we are exporting so much grain uh, is it uh, perhaps too much is it, do we have enough for ourselves uh, so uh, these are the first signs and very few uh, you know, a uh, few years ago, people did not understand the, necess the necessity for uh, food security. We can buy everything with our money, and now we see that we have an overproduction of poultry. We export uh, poultry meat, and now there is, uh, we also uh, sell pig meat. Uh, and we and they say, and uh, the pig breeders say that uh, we are feeling we as if we were on a fast train, and uh, we don't know uh, how is it going to stop and when and uh, what because they produ produce a lot and they don't know uh, what they will do when all the markets will be saturated. So we need uh, some new fresh ideas, uh, including our organic. Uh, uh, agriculture. Well, our um, event is uh, scientific and practical, so we should uh, think uh, like scientists. In Russia, the situation with organic agriculture, well, we need to take a certain decision because in parallel uh, with the understanding of uh, 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 the potential for making such supplies bigger, but we now have a project with China on soy, or soy production. And uh, soy is not an easy, an easy plant to, mm, uh, to produce, uh, to grow. And now we have uh, used up almost all our capacity for soy production. Uh, and we must, uh, we must be rational. Organic uh, agriculture needs, uh, we need to, to, pro to sell organic uh, foods, but we need also to sell foods. So uh, I will make a special session on uh, soil. So Chinese came to us and said, please sell us uh, 10 million tons of soil. And uh, uh, we said, well, we don't have so much soil. But other experts say that we can uh, pre grow soil on one third of uh, Russian territory. And people, some remember Khrushchev with uh, his, uh, uh, with his uh, corn production or maize production. You know, it's a, a serious subject. Uh, Vladimir uh, has asked me to make uh, conclusions. Well, I will make just one. We are now at the very beginning of a long way. 
uh, we must understand what uh, the what expert is in fact accelerators information things like that we have spoken to similar agencies uh, uh, we asked how they can uh, accelerate how do they accelerate experts nobody does that uh, like we for example the the germans have a program as production of optic uh, equipment to China and so they are taught uh, to taught how to sell optic equipment uh, to China if they have another country to sell optic equipment to then they start another program so we must also arrive at this uh, at this point uh, some point in uh, at some point in future, but we do have a lot uh, of uh, potential in agriculture and the uh, experts of agriculture. So, and uh, and uh, another question, uh, please, the lady in white, and then you will get uh, the microphone. Please be qu quick. Irina from St. Petersburg uh, Company, I would like to start. I would like it. Well, one minute. You have just one minute. Just no. Just ask your question. No. Please do not say thank you. We are all thankful. But let me. Then I would like to ask Sergei Mayorov. We are a member of a cluster and a priority project. We know how it works in practice. It's an affiliated uh, person. So Sergei Vasilievich, you have ten uh, seconds more, and then. And my second thanks is to Andre because we use uh, the service of Rex and uh, uh, we are thankful for uh, for the services. The manager that we have explains to us how we can use uh, uh, the capacity of Rex. Uh, we are a business. Uh, what do you produce? First, uh, modernization of uh, production, and second, transfer center of uh, transfer of technologies. We collect innovations from all over Russia and uh, the CIS and try to scale them. May I ask a question? Uh, I would like to know the opinion of the participants of the discussion with which uh, uh, with which companies is it e easier to work with large scale, medium scale, or small scale? Well, we'll answer it at the very end. And now, Pierre uh, Galina, Minister of uh, Industry of Yaroslavla Oblast, I would like to ask you, as uh, from the point of view of the Export National Project. Are you planning to do anything in connection with uh, Rostat and statistic information? You know, uh, specific regions uh, have the following problem. We have industry, we help uh, uh, it to uh, start exporting, but some of them start uh, pr producing tires or cables uh, through trade houses which are registered in Moscow. And therefore, uh, we have uh, an imbalance in St. Petersburg. Uh, St. Petersburg sells uh, grain, but nobody grows grain in uh, St. Petersburg. So it is very important for KPI uh, to uh, do correct assistance. Look at the state council decision. Uh, you, Andre, please answer this question and then sum up uh, uh, the panel as uh, the per well. It's not a new question and there is no answer to it uh, so far. Uh, we don't know how to uh, count. Uh, of co as for the customs, uh, the customs say that of course we can uh, uh, make the routing to the producer. We will achieve this, but not now. So we will have to use uh, the. Statistics that we do have, all the special say so. But you are right to be concerned with this issue. But I don't see any solution. Neither ourselves nor Ministry of Industry do not have it. Now, as for uh, the summing up, thank you for this possibility to be the moderator. I'll be very brief. First of all, people say. That every see, 
that every family, every happily family is exactly like all the other happy families and the unhappy families are very different. It's, uh, it can be said also about exporters. Uh, all happy exporters are the same. They have uh, well-organized uh, services, have good agents abroad. They can use uh, state support. They have a very good logistic chain. Uh, introduce innovations and so on and so forth. Why? Because if one element is missing, he is no longer a happy exporter and very soon will no, <coughs> will no longer be an exporter at all. So the success of all this uh, for new companies uh, lies in doing correctly all the steps. You must have a, potent, a product with expert potential, otherwise uh, no matter how much we promote it, uh, uh, it won't sell. And uh, so the first thing that we are as we, that we do, we assess its products uh, so as not to give false hopes that it could sell it uh, uh, products abroad. Then knowing the markets, marketing, logistics, uh, using online technologies, etc., etc., all these things are necessary. Uh, they must be introduced, only then uh, will it be possible. And the starting level is such that it allows us to make a breakthrough. But this breakthrough is possible not uh, through some magic bullet, but uh, through making the correct steps on key, on, uh, key, uh, direc in key directions. Uh, uh, you cannot make, uh, you cannot work a miracle through one uh, consultation, piece of advice, or something else uh, like this. No, we must work on it. We must make regular steps, uh, correct the mistakes, uh, and to go in the right direction. Then we will have a, um, a result. Otherwise, it's the most important uh, thing. As for uh, various things that have been uh, said here. Well, we have we do have a huge potential, and things uh, that we have heard here are just a small, uh, a small part, uh, a small beginning. We just pu put down a stake. Uh, we shall develop it, for example, in the field of tourism and uh, transportation, in IT, engineering services, etc. But uh, in reality, we have a green, unexplored continent. Uh, uh, in front of us, especially as regards systemic state support. We do have certain success, uh, but uh, it's uh, thanks to the efforts by, or by companies themselves. Of course, we are lagging in the field of information, both in knowledge and business uh, relations, and this is a fact. And here, all our efforts by the regions and by the federal center must be directed at uh, correcting this situation, at putting it right. We must do it through business missions, ex exhibitions, accelerators, uh, online uh, technologies, etc., etc., etc. Uh, and of course, using modern technologies, modern technologies today at the breakfast, I. Uh, announced uh, the information, I shared the information which I had received in Shanghai during a huge event. Uh, they announced their new plans to achieve the amount of sale in uh, uh, on the Chinese market, $500 billion per year. It is of uh, the whole of Russian uh, foreign trade, uh, including oil, gas, and everything. And they say that uh, we should, through Alibaba, we should sell imported dairy products. That means that uh, that uh, the product must be uh, sent uh, from uh, the foreign uh, producer to the Chinese uh, consumer within three days. Now you understand what online trading is. Uh, these are the prospects. And finally, the last thing, uh, uh, the, we should put the emphasis on uh, the companies. Uh, when we spoke about national projects, uh, we spoke about micro stimulus, stimuli, 
etc., and some micro incentives, etc., etc. But the practice showed that you need to be in communication with the uh, uh, leaders of the company, and uh, uh, we must uh, we must work with them and uh, uh, with. Uh, Small scale, medium scale, and large scale companies, of co though of course so the main growth will come from large scale and medium scale companies. Well, that's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andre. I would like uh, to uh, add just uh, one thing. It's so good uh, what I have. I can share my experience uh, from uh, which I learned from my parents. It's wonderful that we have so many people who would like to help you, but uh, you can achieve something only if you work yourself personally. With otherwise, no amount of help would uh, uh, help you. So I would like to thank uh, the audience. You have been uh, very uh, attentive. You helped us to speak, and I would like to uh, thank all the panelists individually. The panel has been very interesting.